being the only girl on the pitch really gave me a certain type of grit and a certain type of character that then really kind of has gone on to shape my my life after that off the pitch um you know you really have to kind of prove yourself and and be kind of willing to to fight for your place when you're the only girl Yes, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Voices of the Game. I'm joined by some amazing guests from across Europe. And today we're going to be exploring the idea that football gives us many, many rewards beyond just winning or on-pitch success. It's all about how the game helps us to develop as individuals, helps us to build our character. I mean, it's more than just top bins and three points and silverware. But first off, before we get into that, let's start with the on-pitch stuff. What would you say is your biggest win or achievement in the game so far? And I want to start this with Maxwell. For me, I would say my debut, you know, because I was I was really ready for it. When the game day came, I was on the pitch, like looking at the supporters and saying, yes, this is what I wanted and now I've achieved it. I would also say the same thing as Maxwell. I made my debut in, in Frankfurt. I played uh, the first time. In front of 50,000 people, it was um, crazy. But um, yeah, I was happy about it and also ready to play. Um, and I think it was, for now, yeah, a great moment in my life. With elite football, of course we know it's about winning and, and there's a big importance of it. But I want to take it to the personal side and off pitch. From my experience, I got dropped from academy when I was 16 and it was a bit like, oh no, what, what am I doing next? Like, I thought football was the, the way for me, but it, it wasn't. And there's a certain element of character you have to have to try and bounce back. Irrespective of what the outcome is, you go for it. Um, and it's definitely translated into what I do now. So Karim, I want to ask, you know, you left Munich at such a young age. Um, how, did you, how did you turn that around and, and bounce back from that disappointment? At the beginning, I didn't want to, to change the club because I wanted to stay in Munich and uh, stay with my friends and my family. Life is always, uh, it's not not uh, every time fair, but um, you have to keep going and, and work hard. Maxwell, dipping into your Right to Dream journey, how do you feel uh, Right to Dream helped in terms of broadening your experiences and knowledge of the outside world, not just about football itself? Kids in my community, like, we see Right to Dream so different. Like compared to every academy in, in Ghana. They have these traits that I know of, like uh, being self-disciplined, like giving back, one one of it, like integrity. They also let you like know your potential. You know? We have education and, and uh, football. Not not everyone in Right to Dream had the opportunity to be professional players. Others are in schools now, just because they have those platforms, you know. Amazing, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna ask you guys all the same question regarding when you were young, potentially you're really bad at something. Like I, for example, I could not sit still. I was terrible at that. I couldn't sit still for the life of me. Um, and I feel like football for me helped me to calm down in a weird way. For you guys, what was it like? Were you really bad at something? Did you have like a bad trait about you and then football gave you a new one to replace it with? And I think through playing football, I started to learn and understand how to deal with my emotions a bit better and how to deal with with uh, maybe those defeats um, and kind of re redefine winning a little bit in my head and understand what it is that actually mattered uh, beyond kind of the scoreboard. And at Girls United, um, we talk a lot about confidence. We talk a lot about resilience um, and, and, and decision-making. Um, and kind of, I guess, all these skills that will help them in their lives, uh, not just as footballers, but also just as people who can really overcome those barriers that life might throw them and and uh, and just be the best versions of themselves, ultimately. That's cool. Kareem, what about you, bro? It's almost the same like you, AK. It was like, um, I couldn't sit still. I was, I was, it was really crazy. Uh, yeah, when I was young, but uh, also <laughs> yeah, I was I had no patience, you know. I just uh, wanted to to achieve my goals right now, and um, 
now I understand with football, if I want to to be better in something, it just take time. So Max, talk to us a bit about the hijab project, what it is, um, and and what and why you felt like you had that purpose to to want to do that. This this project is through my experience. You know, I used I used to have this girl in my former school, Atomi Nima. She she used to be so talented, like so talented in sports. She she stopped playing because she has she has nothing to cover and help with it, you know. So when I introduced the the hijab, then I was like, okay, this is the thing that I can use to to support this kind of girls in my community because I just want them to to have the freedom, you know, to participate in sports because I know they are so talented, but they think it's so difficult for them to participate in sports. That's class, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So cool. I just want to use my voice to impact people at home because yeah, I know where I'm coming from to be honest. Like I just want them I just want them to see a role model that's trying to lead them to the to the right path. I want to have the voice to impact the world. That's sensational man. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about at Girls United about how the players themselves become agents of change in their own communities and I think that's so important what Maxwell's saying about you know, being able to uh, recognize how you can have an impact in your own environments and and what you can bring to, to the community through football. For myself, it's using the presence to, to make an impact. Um, there's not a lot of Eritreans in, in football, so I love to try and to try and make a difference there and try and uplift that community as well. Um, but at the same time, also, I feel like especially with footballers who, or young footballers who might not get a chance to be in a professional environment or might come out from there thinking, I can't do anything else. Being able to show them that there's more to the game than just on the pitch and that actually you can still be in football without playing it. You know, there's, there's so many ways. You can, be, you can be a coach, you can be you know, something to do with media, you can be part of the physio team, but there's, there's so, many, so many avenues in it and I just want to be able to to share that and give the kids hope that they can also pursue a life in football without having to play. Just hearing your stories as well, for me, has been a, a great pleasure. This is a topic that I'm so passionate about, so to be able to share this experience with you all has been, has been amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys.